Alright, so I just got done watching this documentary called Dark Girls. And it's a, do and it's a documentary about the, um, how do you say, not the oppression, but like how, how black women in America feel some type of way about their dark skin and like they're very insecure. I guess it's the best way to put it. They're insecure about their dark skin and how they look and, you know, how they view themselves as ugly and sort of like all the different angles of it or most of the different angles of it as usual they started out with the show me the pretty show me the pretty girl show me the ugly girl show me the smart girl show me the dumb girl and it's always you know why is she smart because her skin is white why is she dumb because her skin is dark why is she beautiful? Because her skin is light. Why is she ugly? Because her skin is dark. And it's just like, okay. Like, you know what I mean? How, how, how many times do we have to see that? You know, okay. We, we, we get it. Thanks. You know. But, not to go off into that too much. But, there's a couple of issues I want to talk about that this documentary addressed. Um... Well, before I get into that, I also want to I want to mention something because I noticed this, and I don't want to. Well, I was saying I don't want to give to the documentary away when I kind of just told you what it was about. <laughs> but one thing I noticed about this is when they interviewed men on what their preference of woman was, whether like dark skin or light skin. I noticed all the brothers on there who said, "You know, yeah, I like dark skin girls." You know, I mean, that's just what I that's just what I do. You know, you feel me? You know. All of them had their faces shown, but the brothers who were like, "I just like light skin girls," you know, that's just what I, that's just what I do. That's what that's what's attractive to me. You know, it is what it is. They all they they had their faces blurred out. And it's like, and, and and I found that funny because that's very telling. It's like, okay, what do you think is going to happen by you saying you like light skin women? You know, now, not necessarily white, because that, that's always an argument that likes to be brought up. Is like, oh, well, we're talking about white girls versus light-skinned girls. Because, see, th this kind of goes into the colorism issue that I've, seen, uh, that I've heard addressed online as well. It's like, you know, you have a dark-skinned black woman and a light-skinned black woman. And if you choose the light-skinned black woman, you know, she's closer to white. You hate yourself. You think the black girl, the darker skin girl, is ugly, et cetera, and so forth. But if you take that same light skin girl, put her against a white woman, a Hispanic woman, any other race of woman, and I mean, and that's even regardless of ethnicity. Because, like I said in my other videos, there are Indian women who are as dark as night. I mean, they are like African dark. Okay, if you take that same light-skinned woman and compare her to any other race of woman, if you choose her, then you're good because you, you chose black. Even if you put her against like an Indian woman who's darker skinned, if you choose the black woman over the Indian woman, even though the Indian woman's skin's darker, if you choose the lighter skin, that's okay. But if you take a, another black woman whose skin is equally as dark, as the Indian woman, and you choose the um, light-skinned black woman over the darker-skinned black woman, now there's a problem. Now, see, that don't make no sense. And this is what I'm. And this is what I try to tell black people out there is, you know, other races watch what we do, so you can't have a fluctuating standard. And I don't understand what's so hard about. Uh, what's so hard about that? Like, is it really that much of a, of a, uh, what is it, a, a mental, inc like, wait, I almost say mental incapability, but like, you, like, you just can't follow that logical uh, process, you know, and it's like, I don't know, it's just, it's just stupid. Anyway, I, I want to move on, because I want this video to be too long, but anyway, I, I, I did notice that, like, you know, okay, black guys who like light-skinned girls, regardless of whether they're white or not you know, don't show their face, but the guys who like dark skin, they show their face, and it's like, you know, huh, what repercussions are you scared of, you know, but I, I just find that funny, anyway, this next point 
is very, very perplexing to me. And I'm going to do another video on this, but this shows how... Well, I'm, I'm just going to the point, and then I'm, I'll, I'm going to say that in reverse order. The documentary made the claim that... Well, somebody in the documentary made the claim that white men like black women. Specifically speaking about they like their natural beauty, they don't like them with makeup on, they're, you know, they want them to just be, like, be just natural, they don't have to straighten their hair. Um, it's funny they say that, because I don't, I don't see that, okay? Like I said, I Obviously, I've been in the black community all my life, but I have yet to see a, or hear on a, on a, first off, I don't even see white guys even like black chicks, okay? So, that right there is like, well, hold on, let's, let's address point A before we start talking about D, uh, D, E, and F, you know what I'm saying? So, but anyway, l let's just say that there's a, a, a large enough niche of white guys who like black chicks that we can analyze this accurately, okay? Um, I don't see the few white guys I've seen with black women, with black women who aren't dressed up, aren't done up, don't have their hair straightened, don't have their, I mean, and by hair straightened, I mean actually done up in some type of way. Like, it just ain't out there. Like, it's naturally grown and mildly taken care of to the point where it's not uh, ugly and torn up. Okay, and all the white guys I see with black chicks always have women with um, their hair done, whether it be a short haircut with you know a perm, or whether it be long hair with a perm, or whether it be long hair with slight curls, whatever. Their hair is always done a certain type of way. Second, they don't have women with no facial makeup. I have never seen that. You know, like I said, I go to a mixed church. And a truly mixed church, not a white church with like three blacks, um, three black families. I don't see the white men with black women with black women who are just looking like whatever. And I have yet to see that really ever, like unless you want to talk about, okay, there's a, a white man and a black woman who are married, have been married for years, and you're at their house and... You know, they're just sort of like, oh, hey, come on in. You know, yeah, we're staying in for the night. You know, okay, then. But you know, at that point, what, what, what are you, what are you really arguing? You're not really arguing anything because that's just people. But when you know, when I was out clubbing and stuff, I didn't see that. I didn't see that at all. Not once. You know, I mean, they, they were with black women who had it going on. I mean, they, they were with black women that I was like, damn, where'd you find her at? Dang, on, oh, man, mm, somebody, a, 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 a black dude let that go. Oh, mm, I can't even believe it. <laughs> ain't, ain't that a shame look <laughs> you know well w whatever but you know that whole claim that you know white men like black women just to be natural it's like I, I, I ain't seen that you 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 gotta show me more than just one or two examples on you know this side of the Mississippi <laughs> for me to see that I'm sorry like you, you I, I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need more evidence for that claim because I, I, I've yet to see that and the amount of times that I've heard white men look me right in the face and Una, well, I wouldn't say unapologetically. They, they kind of apologetically say it, but they say, I, I'm sorry, John. I, I just don't find black women attractive. It's like, yeah, duh. I mean, <laughs> the media doesn't promote them in a positive light. Um, and when they do, it's always you know, the strong, independent black woman who doesn't need no man. So it's, you know, uh, I mean, I, I see why when, you know, you know, fat black women are on television talking about, oh, we're big and beautiful, and ain't no other race, of, uh, ain't no other race of women on there talking like that. So I understand because you know, I hate to say it, Willie Willie Pete called this one out again too, saying, you know, we're the only race of people who will put our trash out there on media and then talk about how you know how beautiful we are when you know our below average and ugly ones are the representative of beauty, and then very rarely will we put up a. A uh, like like a, a Naomi Campbell, uh, Tyra Banks, you know, and again, and notice I, the, my first two go to thing, my first two go to examples are models who were in their prime twenty something years ago. So they, all that's almost case in point. So, 
So I, I, I get it. It's like, yeah, you're not attractive. You're, yeah, yeah, Mr. White Man, you're, you're not attracted to um, what would be ugly in any race. I mean, I show me a race where the fat, disgusting, out of shape, loud and obnoxious woman is revered as the pinnacle of beauty. I mean, let's go to the white community not promoted let's go to the asian community not promoted heck let's even take it back to the quote-unquote motherland let's go to africa not promoted um let's go to the the indians of actual india not like the native americans uh not promoted let's go to mongolia and the mongols not promoted um let's hit all of the asian the, the most popular asian countries thailand korea's uh china and japan not promoted, not promoted, not promoted, and not promoted. So, I, I get it. I, I, you, know, you don't have to sugarcoat it. You don't have to sit here and act like, you know, oh, you, you, I'm not racist, but, you know, it's like, come on. Let's just, just be real with it. Just be real with it. You're not attracted to black chicks because they're not promoted. The ugly ones are, and no one's attracted to the ugliness. I mean, like, or no one's attracted to ugly. It doesn't matter what skin tone it comes in. So... But whatever. Um, next point. Black men um, treat uh, black women like maternal figures and not like life partners. That is not true. Um, here's my problem with that. is I, I see how they came to that conclusion. Because, you know, black men do still hang around black women. And by black, I mean dark skin. Like, I, I want to put that in context. Um, but... Um, yeah, that's that's not the case because I I don't I uh, I don't see that you know like I see like brothers who hang out with sisters who got dark skin don't treat them like oh you know she's real cool we get along great you know she's like a sister to me but I'm gonna keep it moving you know it's I I, I don't I I've I've yet to see that or hear that from other, from other from other black dudes so. I don't like again. I, I see in the actions how they come up with that, but that's not the motivation. And I think they they probably need to go reanalyze that one. So that's that's just my take on that. Um. All right. Now th th this this next point addresses what I addressed in my Canada video. All right. And they tried to counteract my point, and I see. Um. Again, th this is one of those. This is one of those situations where it's like they're using a recent event to say that it's always been this way, and that's not true, okay? Except my Canada video idea was when I was in Canada, that was back in 2001, and they're using the, um, like, sort of, sort of a more recent phenomenon. And what, and what their example was is that dark skin is looked down upon all around the world and they even knew some lady who was like you know oh this the black white colorism issue or the black white issue or or should i say the colorism issue of lighter skin is better let me be more accurate with that is not just in america it's worldwide first example they went to was the dominican republic now there's a guy i work with who's haitian and he talks he like when i asked him about his background he even brought this up, and I'm glad he told me from a more objective source first, because he was like, yeah, the Dominicans have a race issue, or have a colorism issue, but it's almost like, you know, the pot and the kettle are over here talking about who's blacker and why they're better. He's like, you know, because he's Haitian. He, his background's Haitian. He's like, because he, he, he was in Haiti until he was like a teenager, and then he left Haiti and came to America. So, you know, he, he, he grew up with all that. He he grew up with all that, um, seeing seeing all that stuff. So he was kind of like, both y'all the same skin color. Why y'all arguing? You know. But the people who they the the Dominican that they interviewed said that yeah, it goes on. And you know, one guy was sort of like, you know, the girl he was with was happy because he was lighter skin than she was, and her family was so open to accept him. And you know, he 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 kind of just went into it. But at the same time, it's like okay. Where, where does colorism come in at and what's the cause of it? Again, like I've said this before, we have to admit that there's a rich white ruling class for us to address this issue. And when you go to the Dominican Republic, like you can't, 
you can't choose the slave trade nations as examples of what the rest of the world is on. Because they even went to Africa, they went to the Dominican Republic, they went to um, Cuba, and obviously America. Those are all places that the white slave trade was on. You know what I'm saying? Like, go somewhere else. And, and they did go somewhere else in one example, talking about Korea, but the motivation for why Koreans wanted light skin is not the same reasons as to why uh, North America and uh, Western Africa and Europe are on the colorism issue. Because they, they, they interviewed the Korean chick and she was like, oh yeah, they, they want like almost like literally white skin and blah, 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 blah. But, but they never went into why. You know, of course, when it, when it comes to America, they want to go into, oh, what's the media and, you know, the media's own, like, they, they didn't say white people, but they implied it. Because I noticed when, whenever you really address the white elite, and this, and this is how I know that my, my solution to racism is correct. Because every time I see a documentary that says, let's help solve racism, they always take it to kind of implying the white elite rule it, but no one ever comes out and says it. And that's how I know my answer is right, because I notice whenever a white, a black, a uh, Hispanic, or anyone else actually calls out the rich, ruling white elite for what they're on and what they do, they end up shot, they end up ostracized, they end up dead, they end up, well, I guess shot and dead would be the same thing, but, um, you know, it's like they're always shut down, and it's just like, I, I-, I noticed that. It's just like, how come every time the actual source of the problem is called, someone gets bumped off, someone gets whacked, they get exiled, they get, it's like, and, and that's how I know that racism is being promoted. But anyway, I'm not, I'm, you already know, some of y'all already know my thoughts about all that, but regardless. So, anyway, they, you know, they went to the Koreans and started talking about all that stuff, but they didn't go, but they didn't go into why. It's like, yeah, because their color issue doesn't have anything to do with why our color issue is the way that it is. But they just try to throw that in there to make you think that, oh, this is all over the world and oh my goodness, but we didn't go into East Africa. We didn't go into, um, they briefly mentioned South Africa, but you know, again, they, they really didn't go, they didn't go too much into detail with it, but we didn't go into the Arab nations. We didn't go into the, um, uh, like the, uh, all the stands and you know the former uh, USSR for those of you who uh, want to talk who are old enough to even know that area you know, like the Czechoslovakia the Kyrgyzstan like all like that region they didn't go into that region they didn't go well they re- didn't have to go into Europe because I mean that's the home of the white people so you don't have to do that but like I noticed that they only went on the slave trade and then used one example of a of a place who who does have color issues but it's not for the same reasons you know and again that's what I tell people be analytical of the media that you watch because you are being manipulated. And see, the way they did it really did show like, oh my God, every word, every word does hate dark skin. Oh my goodness. And it's like, no, that's a lie. I was just in Canada and trust me, it's different there. And that's just, that was just 20 miles off of the U.S. Canadian border. Given it was at this point uh, 14 years ago, but I mean, let's be serious. Uh, dislike towards dark skin is not going to spread worldwide in 14 years. Like, I'm, I, that's just not going to happen. I mean, you know, it's, it's just not going to happen. And then, but, you know, there's also other things that go into that, like the U.S., like a, a lot of uh, nations follow the U.S. because Western media is what, um, what, what Western, the, the Western, again, the rich, white, ruling oligarchy funds Western media which via goes around the rest of the world. So some of the colorism issues that do exist in other countries are first, are first off, they're just recent and they're just now growing. And it's because they watch media or Western media, which one guy uh, talking about Africans did mention that. But again, it's Western Africa who's, you know, doing uh, business. If you know how the money across West Africa works is doing business with the Western nations. So therefore that's why they're all, that's, that's why they're on that. But that, that's neither here nor there. But anyway, um, I'm going to like, there was a Cuban, there was a Cuban woman who was also on the colorism issue saying that one, like her aunt told her cousin to, you know, marry white, light skins better. Uh, don't stay out in the sun too long or else you'll, um, You'll, you'll get too dark and you'll get ugly. And again, that's uh, that, that's another slave stop. 
and they're really tied to Western media or West. Yeah, they're really uh, connected to Western media. So, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Like that. That's just what you're gonna get here when, when, when everyone's following the United States. The BS from the United States goes right along with it. So, I mean, you can't sit here and just keep promoting white women, white women, white women, white women, white women, and then get upset when the outrageous minority sits here and says, oh, I, I guess white is better. Like they have no other comparison. You know, I mean, what, what do you expect? I mean, again, it, it's slave mentality. When you beat someone down over and over and over and over and over again, and give them no hope of giving, of no hope of getting out of whatever situation you're beating them into, and then when they finally sit here and go, "All right, well, I, I just give up," then it's just like, "Oh, look at like, oh, the, they have no wherewithal. They have no." It's just like, of course they're gonna think that. You know, humans are only so strong when you ostracize them and isolate them and then beat them down and oppress them. You know, I don't care how strong you think you are. You know, if you're cut off from your support base, you're cut off from those who are, are around you, who are like you, who who want, who 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 uh, view the world the same as you, and then you're oppressed actively and constantly from a group who's not like you in a lot of different ways. Then, when you finally give up and give in, what do you think is I mean, this is all you're you're a weak person. No. No, you're not weak. It's just you were cut off. You were you were vul you were vulnerable. You know, what I mean, like uh, I mean, that, that, that's a standard military tactic. How do you take down a country? Well, first you surround the country and cut off all the resources, cut off the food going in, cut off the ammunition going in, go cut, cut, cut them off and then more or less starve them out. You know, and then you can attack because they're weak and they can't they can't grab out to anything to hold on to, you know, but anyway. Um, last thing, they, um, there's this one brother who, he was the closest to what I would say address the actual issue as to why black women are insecure about having their dark skin. And like I said, there was another somebody else who kind of briefly mentioned Western media, but this guy went into the, uh, funding of media and he's saying is that, you know, we wonder why black women are insecure about themselves and the excuse is always given, and the excuse by media people is always, we're just giving the people what they want. And people tend to favor light skin. And he's, and he's calling BS. He's saying, wait a minute, how are you going to sit here and say that this is all of the stuff that the people want when you guys have all these organizations and think tanks and research saying that, you know, our, our research uh, identifying people's reactions to media and then you specifically fund things that go a certain way like that like, like how can you sit here and say that you're giving the people what they want when you're more or less feeding the people what they want and putting all your money time and resources and energy into the fact that light skin's better over dark skin but you're saying you're giving the people what they want it's like you know, like you're creating the climate and then saying that the climate is what you're feeding into because that's what the climate calls for. You know, it's, it's like you go in and you uh, you destroy a street. It's like it's like you, it's like you, you, you pay someone to go destroy a street and then you come in and sit here and say that, oh, the people in the neighborhood want the street fixed and I'm going to fix the street because that's what the people want, even though you're the reason the street is beat up in the first place. You know, and, and that's exactly what is going on. I, I, you know, I don't know how many times I got to say this. I guess it's the first time I'm saying this, uh, I guess, in a, in a more public open forum uh, of YouTube. But I, I tell people this all the time is media will lie to you. Media lies constantly. Like, stop believing everything you see in the media. It's specifically spun, it's specifically tailored, and it's specifically constructed to make you think a certain way about a certain topic. And I don't get why people can't see that. I mean, it, it's so, it's so, uh, it's so known by media people that they actually brag when they fool the uh, American public on a certain issue. You know, like, oh, like, ooh, we can, like, especially news reporters. News reporters, and I don't mean news reporters like you're on the street kind of uh, reporting. I mean, like, your people, like, like your editors, your, like, your video editors, your newspaper editors, your columnists, uh, 
like like your columnist writers, it's like they'll specifically sit here and say, okay, well, these were the details. Uh, I want this story told, so I'm going to leave out these details, and I'm going to only say these details. And then when they get the reaction that they get, they go and say, ha I can't believe I, you know, like I have the power to shape public opinion, you know, and, and this is well-known stuff and people are still like, well, you know, uh, I saw research on television that says X, Y, and Z. And it's like, and you believe that, especially when, you know, A, B, and C counteracts X, Y, and Z and you live A, B, and C. It's like, well, uh, that's not, well, you know, uh, my perspective isn't exactly what's going on everywhere else, which I, f I find it funny. People can always associate it that when um, it comes to the media, but they can't associate it with anything else. But anyway, I, I won't get off on that topic. But the amount of funding that goes into... Um, no, I, I don't know. If you go back and listen to my video, I Can't Marry Carrie and Carly, I even talk about it then saying, you know, the media promotes an agenda... It promotes, you know, like white men have an image, white women have an image, black men have an image, black women have an image, Hispanic men and women have an image, Asian men have a, uh, Asian men and women have an image, and it is not an accident that those images are what they are, okay? Now, now, tr now, now, nowadays we're actually in a, we're actually in a cycle. And a lot of what we see now is just symptoms of an overall problem. But everyone keeps trying to analyze the symptom versus going back to the root of the problem. But, or not but, but um, no, no one wants to analyze the root of the problem. So the problem's never fixed because people are trying to fix the symptoms rather than the actual problem itself. Because, again, no one wants to self-analyze. No one wants to admit that they've been brainwashed and duped and bamboozled and fooled into believing a certain thing. They just want to think that, oh, my thoughts are my thoughts when, no, you've literally been conditioned to think a certain way about a certain group of people, regardless as to how smart you think you are. Okay? But, you know, no, but nobody wants to admit that because then it sounds... Because it, it makes you feel like you're an idiot. It really does, but, you know, and again, the, the ruling elites and the people who they hire for social control know exactly that, which is why they can operate now out in the opens, because they know that people will lie to themselves, and that, like, that's why they're bold now. Like, that's why they get on television and talk about, you know, population control, which is code for, we're going to kill people. They talk about sustainability, which is code for, we're going to cut people off and starve them out, i.e. leading to uh, them uh, killing people. We're going to... You know, uh, we're going to regulate this industry, which is code for we're going to control this industry and excommunicate anyone who's not on our payroll. That's what that really means. Um, you know, and, and all this stuff. But, you know, that that's neither here nor there. But that's that's why the elite can operate out in the open and say all this um, and, and have all these racial double standards and racial um, uh, themes. And, you know, it's like, you know. Um, like they, they, they've conditioned white people to not say poor niggers in the hood. You know, it's like, oh my God, that's, that is so racist. You, yeah, I can't believe you would say something like that, but they ain't got no problem talking about, uh, quote, minorities in lower social economic status neighborhoods, end quote. Like they will say that all day long. It's like, okay, what's the difference? Well, one sounds better, okay? But what's the actual difference? Oh, there isn't one. Exactly. It's still racist. It's just coded language. And that's what I love about the the, the Democratic left is they always want to accuse the Republicans of coded language when they're the ones coming up with those dumb terms such as lower socioeconomic status. Really? And y'all wonder why I don't vote Democrat. Goodness. But anyway, I won't get off into that. But anyway, this documentary was just... It was, it, it was good that someone addressed the problem, but again, it's like every, every time it comes to the rich, white, ruling elite, they ain't got no, they, no, nobody wants to really say nothing about it. It's sort of like, a oh, th people who are invisible in the clouds and the media do this. Well, who are their names? On to the next person. It's just like, yep, exactly. Yeah, because see, no one wants to say it's CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, uh, the people who run ABC, NBC, CBS, 
uh, you know, no, nobody wants to really go into who the actual social controllers are. And then, and the social controllers, I mean, the people who are actually on the boards that set all of these uh, agendas and images for everyone to follow. And then nobody wants to acknowledge how the upper echelons, like the, your Rothschilds, Rockefellers, uh, you know, the, those ruling families have are the ones who started and funded this stuff and will pull the money if anything other than what they say is uh, is uh, put forth. You know, and it's just like, OK, like, you know, and, and, and again, I took the answer to racism is white middle class America. Actually, the white collective have to admit that there's a white ruling oligarchy that's controlling everyone. And until that is addressed, we're going to continue seeing these documentaries about, you know, black people have to uplift themselves. It's not white people's fault. Uh, black people have to just fight against their inherent nature to be poor and hood versus we're not going to talk about the systematic oppression such as redlining and reverse redlining and uh, Jim Crow laws and what they were really meant for, what gun control laws were really meant for, what uh, voter... Um, what voting tests and uh, qualificational standards were really for. See, as long as we don't address what, well, as long as we don't address who put those in place, rather than that they were put in place, then we're never gonna, then we're never gonna fix this problem, you know. But anyway, that's that's my video, uh, John from the Gen X Y.